moving on, I, I think um, the time has been set aside in relation to expressions of sympathy for the late Sir David Amos, uh, MP. And I know we were all profoundly shocked to hear of his death and the manner of his death uh, last Friday. And we, he spent more than half of his life in the House of Commons and the tribute from all sides within the House and outside um, confirms how popular uh, he was and how well respected. So I just want to offer uh, my heartfelt condolences to his wife, Julie, to his son and to his four daughters, Eriesh J. Gorawa Anam Jilish. So on behalf of uh, last on behalf of, of the government uh, and the, my, my colleagues uh, Leo Vatker in particular can't be here and, and Eamon Ryan have asked me to, to, to speak on their behalf and on the entire government I join with you and all members of the House in expressing our deepest sympathies at the untimely and tragic death of Sir David uh, MS. Sir David was so needlessly murdered while meeting and serving his own constituents last Friday in Southend on Sea. Holding clinics is something that we as elected representatives do as part of our public service to the communities we serve. Face-to-face -face interaction with constituents is what makes our job worthwhile and fruitful. It's a crucial part of our democracy and we should do our utmost to protect and to continue it. So David's murder was an attack on democracy. I was struck at how all members of Westminster uh, spoke so highly and kindly of Sir David, how he had numerous friends across all parties, and it was described as someone who was exceptionally decent, down to earth, and hard working, and one but could not be moved uh, by the extraordinary expressions of solidarity and friendship um, from his constituents and from the people that he served, um, and who spoke about him so eloquently. Uh, it's a wonderful legacy, I think, as a politician to, to have that. I sincerely hope that Sir David's wife, Julie, and his two daughters receive some comfort from these kind comments as they deal with their deep personal and very sad loss. Thank you, Tisha. Deputy Mary Lou MacDonald. and I too would wish to add my voice and that of Sinn Féin. Um, in sympathy to the family of David Amos, um, and as his family no doubt grieve a very traumatic uh, and sudden loss, uh, I too hope that the, the well wishes and the regards from this house, but right uh, across the world, in fact, bring them some small comfort. Uh, so to his wife, Julie, and to his children and their wider family, we send our sincere condolences. And of course, the job of uh, public service and public representation is all about people. It's all about being up close uh, and sometimes very personal uh, with people. And so uh, his law sends uh, a shockwave through not just the British system, but internationally. And for all of us who are proud to be elected and uh, represent uh, our citizens, we share, too, in the shock, I'm sure, of the constituents of South uh, and West, uh, David's constituency, who I have no doubt are equally traumatised, shocked and saddened by his loss. Eriesh J. Gravan. Thank you very much, uh, Lasky Corla. Uh, on behalf of the Labour Party, um, <clears throat> I wish to express my sincerest condolences to the MS family uh, and to all of uh, Sir David's colleagues when I heard this uh, chilling news last Friday, uh, my immediate thought was, it could have been us. It could have been any of us. Um, at the same time, uh, David was attacked uh, last Friday. Most of us were doing the very same thing he was, representing and serving our constituents in our regular Friday clinics. And the killing of David Amos reminds us all of the brutal murder of our UK Labour colleague, uh, Joe Cox, just five uh, short years uh, ago. David Amos should not have died like this in the course of his work as a public representative. No public representative or no public servant should ever have to die like this. And the genesis of the kind of hate that led to this brutal killing I think needs to be <coughs> reflected on by all of us. This country is not immune. Our national parliament, these houses, has a role in dialing down division. And how we behave in here and online is watched. Good example, 
being able to debate ferociously but disagree respectfully needs to be shown more here. Too often, our standards fall short. May David Amos rest in peace. Social Democrats. Dr. Catherine Murphy. Thank you. On behalf of the Social Democrats, I want to express our sincere sympathies to the Amos family and what is a huge personal tragedy for them. The murder of David Amos is also an attack uh, on democracy, uh, just as the murder of Joe Cox was. There's no doubt we live in a much more divided and unequal world and that there's been a coarsening of political discourse uh, which I think has made politics um, all the more toxic. But there's a line that has been crossed here, and we can't go looking for excuses because there are no excuses uh, for what happened uh, to David Amos. I believe uh, we'll all be united in our um, condemnation of his murder, um, and we all know just how essential it is uh, for us to have that interaction with our, our constituents, uh, whether it's in the UK or here, um, and that should always continue to be the case. Solidarity, people before profit. Uh, last Ken Corla, yeah, on behalf of people before profit, I want to extend my uh, an hour deepest sympathies uh, to his wife, to his daughters, to his family, friends, uh, and constituents. Um, to be murdered in that way is really horrific, uh, terrible and tragic. Um, and it certainly should give us all pause for reflection. Uh, and I, I, I think that the thing, as others have alluded to, is that it is, uh, you know, whatever about political differences and the need for robust uh, debate, uh, a critical part of our democracy is our ability to engage uh, with our constituents. Um, you know, I think about some countries where uh, public representatives have to be flanked by heavy security all the time, and we never want to go down that road, and I think we have to preserve uh, that relationship, even though, you know, things can get tense at times, uh, we want to preserve that relationship, and I think we, ha we have to fight to maintain that relationship with our constituents uh, through our clinics, uh, and as terrible and tragic as this is not let this tragedy uh, undermine uh, that relationship that I think public representatives have to maintain uh, with, with their constituents and those who elect them. Thank you. The regional group. Dr. Burry. It's and On behalf of the region group, I would like to echo the sentiments of the, the attitudes that were expressed to RA today and convey my, my deepest sympathies to David Amos's family and to his friends. I think the lesson I draw from how he lived his parliamentary life is that it's perfectly okay to dis disagree with somebody while still maintaining a very professional and courteous relationship. And those two states are, are perfectly compatible and they can coexist quite happily. I think there's probably less than that for all of us. Um, what I fully appreciate, his family must be utterly devastated at the moment. I think in the fullness of time, I would like to think that they can draw some semblance of comfort from the fact that, that he died with his boots on, doing the job he loved, surrounded by the people he loved, which are his constituents. And I think we should not amend our constituency practices. And I think that's what Sir David would like us to do. And that's the best way to respond. And that's the best way to, to honour his memory. Thank you very much. Elish, the rural independence. Let's go on, In the absence of uh, uh, Deputy Matthew McGrath, on behalf of the rural independent group, we would like to offer our sincerest sympathies to Sir David MS's uh, family his constituents, and indeed to the whole political system that has been rocked by this shocking attack on democracy, because that is what it is. I would just like to draw the illusion of whether it's a person driving a lorry, working for a local authority, whether it's a taxi driver, whether it's any person going about their role, their function in life, or whether you were a politician. Every person, it's one of the saddest things that can ever happen is that a person dies doing their work. It's a terrible, sad thing to happen. But to, to die so unnecessary in this way, it's a shocking attack. And that's why we all have to unite and use this opportunity, Taoiseach, to say that enough is enough when it comes to the type of slippery slope we've gone down over the last number of years with online attacks. Things have been said about w women in politics, about men in politics. 
And we seem to have grown to accept that, that just because you're anonymous online, that you can say whatever you like about a person just because they're a politician. I don't think that's right. And I think that this might be a time for us to stand up and show the rest of Europe that we are not going to take that type of nonsense lying down and that politicians should stand up for themselves and say, we will not take that type of abuse because we're there to serve. We want to continue to serve. We want to keep the link with people. The clinics are so important. It's so terribly important to be able to go out and meet people, sit down with them, listen to groups, and nobody ever wants to see that uh, connection uh, being broken. The independent group. I have to Marion Harkin. That's Ken Corla. On behalf of the independent group, I wish to extend our sincere sympathy to the family and friends and constituents of the late Sir David Emps MP. To his wife Julia, his daughters and son we say, we stand in solidarity with you to recognise and remember a man who in your own words you describe as strong and courageous, a patriot and a man of peace. The brutal murder of David Amos was a senseless and shocking act. The context in which it occurred matters very much. And while it must be noted, its discussion is for another day. Today, in our expression of sympathy, we recognise a man for whom representative democracy was just that, representing his constituents and what mattered in their lives in the House of Commons. He used his platform as an MP to raise awareness and bring about change. And that change was firmly rooted, not in some abstract ideological perspective. Rather, it came from listening, from being available, and from finding ways to translate the needs of his constituents into policy change or legislative change. Like many in this house, I didn't know David Amos or his family, but I hope their pain will be slightly lessened by the fact that the tribute we pay to him are real, meaningful, and based on a lifetime of service. Our yesh je gorau anam chilish. Good morning, Fagus. Suvnis shiri da anam. And I think it's appropriate maybe to have a minute's silence.